Good evening, everyone. This is the Fours Hardcore Sports Talk Show. I'm your host, Bernard Hall, and I have my co-host, Ryan. I have my co-host, Mr. Taylor, here with me, and we're going to go into this first forum, and it's going to be very exciting. We have two exciting NFL guests today, but this first segment we're going to speak about we are going to talk about our Detroit Lions. Right. Boo! <laughs> oh, my goodness. The draft was just, oh, my God. Who they think they are? The New England Patriots or something? We don't even have a fourth of the team that the Patriots have in. And then we had some v- veterans just post on Facebook this weekend, and one of them's a good friend of mine. Everybody knows him, uh, the great Billy Sims, nicknamed Simbo. Oklahoma Sooner, uh, Heisman Trophy winner, uh, very good back that was in the league. He would have been uh, great had he not been hurt. But the biggest joke is Detroit Lions over the years have been called backbreakers <laughs> because <laughs> when you, by the time you finish your career as a running back, you're broken. Half of them don't even get to finish their career. And then Barry Sanders, no wonder why he quit. <laughs> everybody's upset that he took the money and left. Can you blame him? <laughs> Look at what we've done. We've drafted five tight ends in the first round mm. in the last six years. Mm. None of them are on the team. One of them just scapegoated his way out of here, and then he became an all-pro and caught every ball that came near him when he left. That's right. And, I mean, it's just atrocious. And, I'm. I, I can't even talk anymore. I'm going to pass it on over to my to my co-host. Good Go afternoon, Ronnie. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Forest Hardcore Sports Talk. Also, we have joining us here in here in the studio is Leron Taylor. He's in here joining us. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How you guys doing today? We're doing all right. And as far as the draft picks, what do you think about the tight end in the first round again? I mean, it's to me, it's just you cannot pick a tight end. With so much defensive help that the Lions need, yeah. you cannot take a tight end at eight. Not right there. I totally agree. I totally agree. And and if and if that's what you wanted to do, um, I think that they should have possibly traded back because if you would have traded back, you would have ended up getting more, more bang for your buck. That's right. You could have got a defensive player and you could have got – additional picks in other rounds, similar to what the Colts did, similar to what the Patriots do every single year. I just don't see why you would draft a, a tight end, even if he is good that right. early, that runs a 4-7. And this, day, right. and this day and age, it's not too many tight ends in the league that run a 4-7 that's that good besides Zach Ertz. And right. who who knows if he's going to be Zach Ertz or not. You well, know what I'm saying? One thing for sure – he won't be able to get away from no linebackers in the current NFL now. Not Absolutely. those guys that are running four fours and four fives. That is not going to happen. Absolutely. I think. I think that they had a. I, you know what? And, he, and I think if what was the the big guy that the the lineman that they was projected to get if the next pick because they would they would have took the tight end regardless. Yeah, that's, even that's fine if they would have took the tight end. No, but. no, no, no. I'm talking about if my man was available. I'm talking about the best lineman on the board. The D lineman. Right? Yeah, the D lineman. Oh, Josh Allen. Josh from Kentucky. Allen. Okay. Kentucky. Josh, okay. Yeah, yeah. listen, if Josh Allen was available, they were still going to take that tight end. Mm. Because that's that was he was their guy. You know what I'm saying? They for some reason they have in their mind what they exactly what they want. And they're not gonna shy away from their board. I, Just Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was just thinking about you know they got Matt Patricia, so maybe that he was looking for his Gronk. You know what I'm saying at that pick. Of course. But like I said, like if if that was your guy, and he might be a great player. Yeah, he might he might be a great player, but it's no knock on him. You still could have got more. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think nobody in that top 12 to 15 was trying to take a tight end that early. (laughs) I'm in the seat there. He wasn't better than the kid from Alabama, the tight end. So I don't care what they say. I think that that was their guy because he's a blocking tight end. Blocking tight end. He can do and, both. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We already and assigned he, Jesse he, James from that's, the Pittsburgh that's, Steelers. That's a fact. Exactly. So why, why would we do that? You know, here we are. We're here. We're in studio number three. This is the Hardcore Sports Talk Show. Our lines are open, 248 579 
If you got questions, quotes, oh man, anything, just shoot us a call and we're going to answer and we're going to have dialogue and converse. Leron, mm-hmm. tell me something, man. Why wouldn't we get a linebacker or a defensive back if we didn't take the big D lineman? I don't get it. At Oliver, I have no idea. Yeah. That, it, that that was the guy to take, either him or, or Devin Bush, who the Steelers traded up to get. They traded up to get Devin Bush from Michigan. And Devin Bush runs a what? 4-4. 4-4. Four, four, four. Yes. Four, four. Yes. And he just tore up the combine. Yes, him and, I, yes. Him my, and the yeah, other yeah. linebacker from LSU, uh, Devin White. Devin White, like absolutely. I, like, but like I said, guys, you know, their boy, you know, they, they want who exactly – who they want? I mean, they 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 drafted a linebacker in the second round. They ran a four eight six. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? The, the who is this guy? Who is, who is he gonna catch, man? That's what I. And mean. then you have people saying, said, "Well, then you have people saying, well, you know, well, maybe he has good game speed." Isn't that the same thing they said with T T's Tabor? Yeah, said the same, and yeah. he can't even get on the field. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I just don't understand it. We had we had the guy and he he couldn't catch a cold in Alaska with no clothes on and then he go to the Indianapolis Colts and right. they was calling him blue tips. That's because he made all pro. That's because that, they, that's because Matthew Stafford throws the ball ninety miles an hour if he's ten yards away or fifty yards away. Man. Matthew Stafford he he does he doesn't make his his players better. I can and, say that. And Andrew Luck absolutely. does that. Absolutely, Andrew Luck does. That. Listen, when you think about a quarterback that makes their look at look at Tom Brady. And look at Aaron Rodgers. Think about this. You know, they know they make all of their – the receivers that they draft, mm-hmm. okay, you don't even know who they are Mm-mm. until they play with those guys. And mm-hmm. they work for their system. Right. Mm-hmm. But Matthew yeah. Stafford, you have to go get named players to help this guy out, and it's still not working. And if- this guy is 10 years in, man. 10 years. When are you going to say – when are you gonna say enough, enough is, is enough? He has three. And to be honest, to be honest, real talk. If Matthew Stafford was a black quarterback, he would have been gone. He wouldn't have made oh, it past he that been first. Gone. He he wouldn't have made it past that first contract, man. He would have been well, seriously. Well, I didn't even want to bring that. Into, I did. I didn't want to bring that into. I did into the into the you know, into this. You uh, know it. Come form. on, man. But the new thing, everybody, is it's not racism anymore. It's called systemic racism, well, a very classy word, as they say. Call it what you want. Systemic but it, 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 racism. We know. You look look right. how fast they got rid of Andre Ware, man. Absolutely. Mm. Well, my, my thing is it's, that's a no, no good. It's no good. And it, it's mm. just that simple. Uh, Matthew Stafford, he doesn't come in in shape. They will not draft or – Anybody to push him agent and get a, a reputable quarterback right. that'll push him exactly. to come in and stay. When he drops back to pass, it's like it's still at practice or seven oh seven. And speed. they just paid him, so you know he's he not going nowhere. He's not going anywhere. He got three hundred million of our taxpayers and people money in the bank from Detroit. They might as well go for a half a billion. And they study you know I mean? and they study raising the ticket right. prices on the fans. Wait it's a, like, right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is really funny. This is really great right here. Because see, Ford Motor Company just spent a half a billion dollars, if everybody don't know, on Lavillian, the new the company that does all of the electric stuff because mm-hmm. they're gonna they plan on making a, a electric F one fifty. Mm-hmm. So, the tickets are going up again. Of course, and then then the only person from the Lions that got a quarter, that got a, a, a Ford uh, is commercial Stafford. is Matthew Stafford. 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 Yeah. So it's all in the family. Yeah. You know what I mean? They've already uh, you know adopted him. So uh, you, you know, know we we this year it's got to be some accountability. For, I mean, you you know, for he the got, li- go ahead. I'm saying he got help. I mean, he got help. Now he got Galladay. He got the running back. They've been drafting offensive linemen for the last three, four Every years. Ever since he's been here, they, they were get, dra- they you got know what, tight You know what gets end. me, man? You you have guys. You, I call them Facebook Howard Co. Sales. You get everybody on, think that they know sports, you know. And these guys probably, you told them to run a post pattern or, or, or uh, you know, they couldn't do it. You know, mm-hmm. a post, run a post corner for me. They couldn't do it. But they can tell you everything about sport. <laughs> Monday, Monday, Monday morning quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, but you know, as far as Stafford, man, you know what I'm saying? He's been here for 10 years, and and nothing's nothing's getting any better. 
You know what I'm saying? We're so. very stagnant every year. Eight and eight, nine and seven, maybe. I don't even. You know what I'm? What was what was our record last year? What was it four and twelve? Oh man. I'm not sure because we was an eighth. We was eighth, right. so we couldn't have too good of a record. I, I, don't, I, I give up on that. I don't know, but <laughs> let me let me them. let me read this. Let me read this, and y'all can tell me whether or not it's a win or a loss. Okay, the first game at the at, at the Cardinals. What y'all think, win or loss? Loss. I say a loss. Yeah, we lose the games we supposed to lose, exactly. and win the games we supposed. Okay, yeah, week two. You know how the, we operate? Week two at the week two versus the Chargers. Oh, that's an S. That's an S. <laughs> week three. At versus the Eagles, lost. Where we play them here? It, home, it home. don't even matter. We can play them at Belle Isle. <laughs> but they, but they in Philly. Oh, yeah, right. that's an L. Oh yeah, that's an L. And then Week Four versus the Chiefs. Oh, no, why our schedule so hard? Now the, ne- now the next week is the the only week they might win. You know why? Because it's a bye week. Oh wow. <laughs> 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 okay, now week uh, now week six at the Packers at the Packers mm, loss. Oh yeah, they don't play well up in there. That's week tough. seven That's versus tough. week seven versus the Vikings here. No good. Loss. So what's the what are we looking that's at? Owen t- six. That's, a, that's <laughs> right. That's a toss up though. They may the be Vikings. Able, they may be able. That's, to a, that's a tough no, schedule man. though. That's not at, a toss at, up. At home. So we play in the AFC West. That's the toughest division. That's one of the toughest divisions. And right? then okay, it's now this is now you get into ball. now you get into a game. We're gonna have to now play you get into, into week eight. I think may be their first win. It might be their second because they may beat the Cardinals in in uh in, in uh, Phoenix. And like I said, they they win the games they supposed to lose. So I wouldn't be surprised they beat Philly, the Chargers, or the Chiefs, one of them. Okay, week eight. Hold on, everyone. Here's our first caller. Go ahead with your name and your question. Oh, no, this is Jordan Lewis. Hey. hey. Okay, okay. We've been joined by <laughs> Dallas Cowboy Jordan Lewis on the line. How's it going, man? It's good. What's up, Mr. Taylor? All right, all right. Let's – you're going to read down his... Yeah, his, I'm going we're, we're we're to down. step in and we're going to read down some of your accomplishments. He's a Detroit guy, a cast technician, a two-time state. back-to-back state champion. That's right. We're talking about Jordan Lewis. Also, let me say this about Jordan. Jordan probably made the best catch ever in the state championship game. Simply, we call it the catch. That's right. You, if yeah. you don't know... If you don't know what I'm talking about, everybody, y'all can just Google that. But go ahead. That's right. And he is one of an, one of the people that he went to college here at home from the renowned U of M. And they used to they always say the word on the street, what does it take to be a Michigan man? What does it take to be a Michigan man, Jordan? Tell us about it. Uh, just it's a wheel, man. You know they try and break you down as soon as you get up there, man. So it's just you know whoever stays, then you know. I mean, you turn to a Michigan man, honestly. They mm. say those who stay will be champs, correct? Exactly, mm. exactly. Yep. Well, the they word the, the word in history is there's no kid or person that went to Michigan and stayed there four years that don't have a Big Ten championship ring and a Rose Bowl ring. Is that true? Ah no, not yeah, it's just, it's the lake. So that's hype. That's hype, huh, Jordan? That's hype, huh? All right. Yeah, oh man, you set me up for that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh-huh. I mean, but honestly, it's it's, it's really it, it's a pride thing, and, and that's definitely one thing that we definitely gotta we gotta bring back to to the U of M. Okay. And uh, I mean, you you see it traditionally. We we are the, just one of the top schools, if not the top school in the nation. So we we Absolutely. definitely got to get back to that pedigree. All right. Well, I'm gonna go into this right quick. We, you know, we know that your best years are your years of you remembering from being in high school. And uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Taylor, go ask you something. I'm gonna yeah. jump right back on you with this. I good just wanted, stuff. yeah, I just wanted to go down uh, the rest of his accomplishments. Jordan Lewis was a. Uh, uh, Two-time state champ, Army All-American, uh, U of M, uh, went to University of Michigan, four-year starter, first-team All-American, 2016 Tatum Woodson Award winner, uh, a de- defensive back player of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And he was also first-team All-Big Ten and All-American in 2015 and 16. So this next question is going to be, 
for you, uh, Jordan, going to be coming as you got into the NFL and you know what team you were going to and, you mm-hmm. know, how they do you when you first get there. Because, see, I've experienced this, so I want to know that you experienced this. So when you first got there, you know, they start giving you assignments about carry the helmets and the pads. And then when you went to the restaurant, how big was your bill at your when y'all first oh, came to eat? Our first, our rookie bill, our rookie bill, like it was, I forget how many it was, and free agents. I think it was about like nine of us, eight or nine of us, and our bill totaled to like $55,000. <laughs> oh, man. That's how they do you, that was our, Yeah, that yeah. Was our Wait a minute, how much so did you say? 50000 are you serious? 000, man, man. You, go to a, you go to a five-star restaurant and everybody yeah. order whatever they want to drink, lobster, no, steak. No, no, that's what killed us, the drink. The they tr- yeah. drink, they get Louis thirteen. <laughs> right. They oh, get, man. Oh, man, that's the... 1942. Yeah, that's the initiation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the initiation. Yeah, they taking it home, though. They ain't even drinking it there. They taking it home. Right. Oh, for real? Oh, they yeah. getting bottles to go? Yeah, oh, yeah. They oh, taking yeah. Yeah, bottles to go. Yeah, bro, bottles you had their liberty and all that, so... <laughs> So you experienced that, then. I just wanted everybody to know on the mm-hmm. open line. Yeah, no, I feel then. like no. Everybody experienced. You gonna have to come out of pocket for sure. Ain't no you know, question. all the age and stuff. It's like you ain't supposed to be doing it. Like it's real frowned upon. But they they taking stuff out your wallet now. Right, ain't no question. <laughs> and tell them about the guys who try to resist and they wake up in the morning and it's time to be at practice or at a meeting and they can't find thank their clothes God. or yeah. helmet. No, or like, nothing. thank God they ain't never happened, though. They said that if you do that, if you do resist and all that, then you'll find all your stuff in the uh, cold tub. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so. Hey, <laughs> hey, Jordan, let me ask you this. With the draft, uh, first of all, we want to say congratulations to your high school teammate, Mike Weber. Right. Uh, yeah. Also, he's now your your teammate with the with the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, take us through draft week. What's the process? And are, is your phone always going? I mean, off? go ahead. So yeah, your phone your phone rings. So basically, you you having meetings with people to to see. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I remember when uh, when I got drafted, Washington had flew in. They defensive back coach. They GM. And um, I forget a, a few other people in in the front office. They mm-hmm. flew in that week, and I was graduating from U of M. So this is all while I'm still about to graduate. So we doing that. We uh we meeting with coaches. They call on your phone. It's like it's, it's real crazy, man. And this and people think that it just end after the you know the combine and pro day. Like no, you still take visits, all of that stuff. Mm. Some of them still want you to run or work out one more time or catch a pass. Yes, yeah, all that. All yeah, type all of, of different that. stuff. Oh. Yeah. And then so so tell tell everybody about all of the attention you get. You Tell them about how many guys that may have been on the team and you probably never saw them with a girl and a girlfriend in four years. And then when they when they come out that you're going to the, when they come out that you're going to the NFL or you're going to the NBA or play pro baseball, tell them how many be lined up talking about I'll marry you, take me with you. Tell no, them. It, it's definitely crazy, man. It, 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 it's funny to see how like you you've been with this dude for three four years, and then he just it's just another person. Like it's just. Once he, you know, he get projected or something like that, they turn to a whole nother person. And, right. you know, they trying to deal with a whole other different crowd of people. It's, it's real crazy, man, how how that, you know, that hype and that money, is, you know, it to get to people's head real fast. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So take us through how when you actually, you know, getting ready to, you know you getting in and you got an agent and everything and you, and you really got to calm yourself down because you feeling it and, how many people go out buying Mercedes and Bentleys and all yeah, type of stuff like that? It, like it's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. But I'm I'm so thankful for you know all my friends. A lot of my friends, man, my teammates. They they understood what it was to be a you know football player and a and a taxpayer. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, you, yeah. know, you know, number one, they understood that this money, all of this money, isn't mine. You know, and we not we not about to go buy chains and this and that and i've seen people go undrafted buying chains and mm. and different so i'm just like bro like half of that like ain't yours like and, and so they, i don't know what yeah i don't i don't really understand why you know like young kids will come in there and then they yeah. the first thing they want to do is just just blow it okay george give us one second we got a caller coming in okay. Should be our connect, hello 
Go, Carla, go ahead. Hello. Hello, hello. Carla, say your name and what your question is. Maybe we lost them. They'll call back and they'll come back in. But Jordan, tell them about how many people that has to give that stuff back or they owe money. And mm. if you don't watch yourself, who don't people that don't uh they don't put taxes in they uh you know into their form of what they're doing and how quick you can uh lose it lose all of it. Mm. I mean, it still it still blow my mind that you know people would even hundreds of thousands of dollars just blow through it because I you know I came into some money and I'm just like how do people just go through all of this like it's it's hard to understand but once you see how they trying to live they trying to go to the club all the time. They want to buy all these bottles. You know, when you go to the club, you can't just be in, you know, the general population. You got to buy a, a booth, all of that extra stuff. So, you know, they they keeping up with the Joneses, not understanding that, you know, you still got to you still got obligations. You got to pay that money. You still got to play. They want and, you people, know what I'm saying? Yeah. You still, they want so people they, to know that they there. All of, you know, the, the things in that account. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. So you got to you got to really stay level headed and come back down to earth and and just think economically smart, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and people don't understand, like, football money right now, like, when you coming in the, the door, like, most of them people, not they're not millionaires. Most of, most of, them, most of us is not, they, we're not millionaires. So when you when you see people, you know, go third, fourth round, it's just like, uh, hopefully he don't, under, he, hopefully he understands that, this not the type of money that you think you you thought you was gonna get. You know what I'm saying? So it's you got to understand, like, and a lot of them, you know, a lot of them don't. Oh, okay, okay. So can you can you tell uh, us how what your workout form is just year round and to keep in shape and how much how much time and money that you spend on that? I mean, so I'm fortunate enough where the Cowboys, we, we work out, you, we can work out year-round with our strength and conditioning uh, team. Yeah. Our, like, all our coaches are there, you know, year-round. So I save a lot of money by training there. But you do want to take care of your body and stuff like that. So even with that, that's an expense that you, you really want to pay for. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like – it's like it's more, it's more so an investment. So you really invest in, it, in your body. You understand that. This is like your body is your business, so you got to take care right. of it. So you go get those treatments and stuff like that, you know, in the off season, and you always want to make sure that you don't go too crazy. You might, you might, you know, do a vacation or two here and there, but you always want to have that, you know, go mode, you know, even in the off season. So it's really not really an off season. You're just taking trips in between when you're training and stuff. Jordan, I love the fact that, you know, you give back. You gave back to. Um, the, the kids by uh, by your camp. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You know what I'm saying? What you're doing for the kids here? Because I, I yeah, think that's so, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so we, we, we're well, well, going, excuse we're me going for to uh, annual camp around uh, Memorial Day weekend Hold uh, every year. We're at, like This year is going to be May uh, May 26th. So we, we it's an all expenses paid for all the kids. They get shirts, cleats, um, and we're giving prizes out to, you know, the MVPs and and we're just teaching them about, you know, um, what it is to be a professional athlete, what it is to be an athlete, a student athlete, and, you know, just teach them life skills, help, you know, have, having different people in front of them and, and showing mm -hmm. that, you know, it's it's a way to, you know, be successful and uh, just just understanding that they have, you know, all these resources. We don't have got guys like, you know, Des McKean come back, uh, Damon Webb, mm -hmm. uh, DeJuan Rogers, you know, everybody. We don't have everybody back. Um, and we just going, you know, we can we can talk to the kids and say, like, you know, you have these different resources in front of you that that came from where you came from, and uh, it, it's that that can you can reach out and, and you know get help from. So we, oh, we definitely okay. gonna try to expound on that. Well, right now we're having a little technical difficulty. We were waiting on Damon Webb to call. He's called in, but for some reason. We can't get through, but so we're, we're gonna keep. Our engineer is working it out. Yeah, our engineer yeah. is waiting because we we want to get him on the line as well. But we'll continue with the questioning. So the next next thing, Jordan, is we were talking going back. We were talking about how you got a, you know, your body is your business, and mm -hmm. you are on the Dallas Cowboys, which I everybody know that you can stay around there, and that's the new thing in NFL. They try to keep the guys around. They even pay you to stay around and work out 
So that's mm-hmm. you know, that's a really good thing. But you you've had some of the guys coming after some of the guys there that are, were really business guys and took care of themselves, like Emmett Smith and Deion Sanders, and they talked about how they uh, they wouldn't travel unless the place had a five star place with a workout facility and they could take a trainer or work out in between while they're traveling and. Uh, tell us how that goes there in in Dallas with you. Do you do that so, same thing? Like I said, like I, I really I really love what you know our strength and conditioning coaches do. Uh, like I'm just working on a lot of my my explosive work. I, I definitely can do it there. So I mean, why not? If you you got a coach that understands you know how the body works and understands what, where what areas you want to get better in, why not stay there? So. I stay in Dallas as much as possible because I don't like traveling and stuff like that because it's, it just takes me out of my mode. You know what I'm saying? It's not just more so just go training and, and and you can train wherever. It's more so like my atmosphere. I like to be in Dallas where I'm going to be playing and mm-hmm. where I'm going to be practicing every day. And I like the, the environment too. So I, why not just go there and just train every day? So I, I feel like that is what, you know, like Emmett, like what you said about Emmett, I mean, go there and train. I just like to stay in Dallas and stay in that mind mindset. Yeah, I watched Emmett Smith when he finally left Dallas and he went to the Arizona Cardinals and he went there and taught them young men how to be businessmen and players in the NFL and they actually made that trip to the Super Bowl and they you know, Emmett's going to be beloved for that forever. So I know a lot mm-hmm. of the guys hang around there because I got a lot of friends there. And hold just tell them about – tell us about the family atmosphere. Hold, hold on we're a gonna, second. We're going to hold you on, da- George, because – Damon, are you there? Damon's coming in. Hello, hello, Damon, you there? Okay, we're going to – we're still having a little difficulty. He's going to come back in. As soon as he does, Jordan, we're going to cut off for a second and get him on the line with us all. Okay. And we're, we're going to go. But tell us about that family atmosphere that they have there and how the guys come around and help each other out and everything. I mean, it's just – they it, – it, it's just really put together, man. I mean, just the strength – I mean, a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys do. They go train and, and go other places. But I just feel like why not – practice i mean why not go somewhere where the coaches you know they get a feel for you and you know what i'm saying and they they want to help you why not and it's just and it's just beautiful because a lot of the organizations around the league don't do that so i'm very lucky to be with the dallas cowboys because i can you know want to save money and go with some of the best guys that you know that actually understand football and been around football and, and they seen Emmitt smith and they seen you know all of those guys come through the program hello Hello. Oh, Dan, is that you, Damon? Yeah. Oh, okay. Welcome, well. We finally have Damon Damon Webb on the line. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about y'all? We're That's, doing real well. Do we still have you here jo- as well, is, Jordan? Is Jordan you still on? We lost Jordan. We, lost Jordan. we got Damon and lost <laughs> Jordan. We we got a twofer. <laughs> Switch a rule. Everybody bear I'm with us. I, I just got out of meeting. And, That's I, okay. and I'm so slow. I said my reminder. For six, but I forgot I'm an hour behind. Uh, that's right. That's, don't worry about that's it. That's fine. Don't worry it about it. It's a pleasure for us to have you here, man. We're glad you're here. Our engineers trying to get Jordan back, back on, on, the line. on the line with us. But let me let me go down some of Damon Damon's accomplishments. Okay, Damon Webb, he he's also a graduate of Cast Tech, state champion. He's also a, a Army All American as well. He attended Ohio State, four year starter. 2016 Cotton Bowl MVP and 2014 National Champion. It's quite of an accomplishment, sure. young man. How how's, how's that make you feel? That made me feel good. Very good. <laughs> and, and most of all, everyone, Damon is heavy because, see, he just not those accomplishments right there. He got the biggest thing done. Oh, yeah. He's a 2017 graduate with a degree in sports industry. So I know that made your mom and family really proud of you. Absolutely. It. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, that's what they sent me to school for. So getting that degree was very important. To me. A- absolutely. absolutely. A lot of people forget about keeping their eye on the prize. We understand about going on and going to the next level. But uh, you know, you have to keep your eye on the prize, and you've done that. So that's you'll be forever remembered by that and respected. Uh, that's right. So, Dame, let me ask you this one. You know, um, after you okay, you you took the free agent route. Okay, so tell me this: 
is it tell me this is it is it uh better that after a certain uh round that you do not get drafted so you can you know pick where you want to go and just play out your contract and play you know what I'm saying and play into the money that you probably want to get yeah, I feel like it's better when you get like the, especially in the seventh round because you get the chance to pick where you want to go. You get to look at all the team rosters and mm-hmm. it basically you get to make a better business decision on where you think you can fit. Oh, okay. So I, I definitely feel like when you get to like the seventh round, mm-hmm. it's kind of better. Oh, okay. It's better. It's not better as far as like the signing bonus mm-hmm. that you're gonna get, but it might put you in the ideal situation that you want to be in. Yeah. But, Absolutely. So tell us how tell us how your transition has been from being an Ohio State Buckeye to uh, coming into the NFL, and how exciting it was for you when you found out where you wanted to, where you were going. Uh, I was very excited. I feel like I made the right decision right now with the Tennessee Titans, and my transition is going real good. I'm going into year two. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year I was on the practice squad the whole year, so. This year, I'm definitely looking at playing a bigger role and having a bigger impact on the team. So, you know, I'm determined. I'm ready. I'm healthy. So, I can't wait to get this year started. Okay. So we so we mm-hmm. always explain to people. Hello. Hold on one second, uh, okay. Jordan. Are you on as well? Yeah, I'm back. Oh, okay. okay. So we, we have we have both all in the family. Yeah. Welcome, Jordan Lewis, back, and we have Damon Webb on the phone. And our question, Damon, was uh, you said you were healthy this year going into year two and you was excited about the opportunity you have. Now let everybody know how excited you are and about how you can impact the game on just playing special teams. You may not be a starter, but you get in in situations or third down or nickel back. But just on special teams by causing a turnover or coming in on third down and getting an interception or, or just defense in the pass. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, definitely. I feel like right now for me, special teams is very important because I feel like that's my fastest way of getting on the field right now. Mm-hmm. And I know in the league, they think special teams is very important. So yeah. right now, I, I meet with the special team coach every day. I'm learning uh, multiple positions. Mm-hmm. On, on all different units, so special teams is very important to me. Guys, I got a I got a big question. Let's get into the rivalry. How intense is it for real? Michigan, <laughs> Michigan, <laughs> Michigan and it's Ohio crazy. State. I heard, week. I, listen, let me say this before y'all answer this. I heard during game week that both teams don't even go to class. You just practice that whole week for <laughs> for the <kids>. nah. <laughs> nah, That ain't true. You gotta, go to <laughs> you gotta go to class. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the no- uh, You're not gonna be able to play. <laughs> right. So you'll come to your so, locker and it'll be locked and they say it'll say, see the head coach, huh? <laughs> so how intense right. how how intense is it guys? Is, is it really you know, is it crazy intense or what's going on? You can sound off first, Damon. Go ahead. Yeah, it's very intense. I know at Ohio State, like that whole Michigan week, like we have like our scout team dressed up as they um as they were in their uniforms. I know like all around campus, like any building that has like an M on it, they like put a red tape X red tape on it. Mm. And the whole week we only play one song throughout the locker room. I think it's like LL Cool J Time for War. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's very intense. So tell us tell us how much <laughs> flat did you do you did you catch all your four years from being an Ohio State Buckeye instead of going to Michigan? I mean, yeah, I caught a lot of stuff. I, I definitely caught a lot when I was in high school, uh, when I committed. But, yeah, I feel like I made the right decision at the end of the day. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Apparently you did. So, <laughs> absolutely. So, so, I, <laughs> yeah, so the joke is on them, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I bet you now you won't have that problem. Everybody will be wondering when you show up now. They gonna want to talk to you, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Jordan. You, right. Jordan, you gotta chime in. Tell us about the week that week. Tell us about him. Man, I mean, it's crazy. It's really crazy, man. When, when Coach uh, Hope was there, we couldn't even wear red in the building. So mm. it it would be real crazy, man. They tape all the scout team helmets. Uh. 
like they little scarlet color. They wear red and stuff like that. And you know what I'm saying? It it'll be they they tell us like this is a huge game, really. Mm-hmm. And we but at the same time, what I feel like we should have did more was really emphasize it, man, because that was the road to the Big Ten championship every year, man. So yeah. we should have really emphasized like way more about like. We have to get this done, man. But every, you know how everybody is. Every coach wants to take every game differently. You know, they. I mean, everything is the same. So, I mean, I feel like they definitely they beat us in the edge of the, you know, getting prepared for it, man. But it, it and, and I wish we. I just wish we got that game back, man. My my senior year, man. That's it, dog. I, I just feel like I got cheated. Yeah. That's all. That's it. I just feel like I got cheated. I mean, that's all I had to say about the rivalry. That's it. Right, 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 right. right. So it's fun, it's it's fun with y'all being friends. How you how you get yeah. to rib and jab each other? It's huh? it's crazy. Yeah, and I know. Yeah, yeah, I know you say. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we cast technicians, man. We all oh yeah, together, for sure. Honestly, man. Oh yeah. for sure, because it's, you, it's love, it's love. Every right, time we see each other. because the because the old saying was what I was always told is, no matter how level you go and how far you win and much you win in the NFL, you always go remember what you done in high school. But it's man, uh, yeah. it's crazy, man. Yeah. I don't yeah. think people understand that. Yeah, you just remember being most, one of the guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Guys, I got to ask this question here because um, I just want to know, and I want you guys to keep it clean. Being that you two were both uh, uh, really successful uh, college athletes, and now you're in the, at the next level of the pro, what is the craziest thing that a fan has asked you for? And I need you to keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> what's the craziest? Th- what's the craziest thing that just made you say what? I was just like at a food drop, and like one of these fans came up to me and told me to sign the Bible. Wow! I, I, told him, like, I, didn't, I didn't feel right. I was like, yeah, I can't you tell her that's no good. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, you ain't supposed to sign the Bible. Man. Yeah, you ain't. You, you'd have been, but, uh, you'd have been calling you Lucifer Morningstar. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What about you, Jordan? No, I mean. Nothing, honestly, nobody. The Michigan fans, they not as crazy as Ohio State fans, man. So I feel like ain't nobody really asking no crazy stuff. Man. Okay, so okay. It's been it's been real. I mean, you said keep like nobody has ever asked me to sign no nothing, no private parts, none of that. So mm. it, it's been pretty clean on my end. Okay. Oh, okay, so we're gonna go into this next part, and uh, we're in studio number three. This is the this is the Forest Hardcore Sports Talk Show. Phone number, the lines are open for questions for the guys. We have Jordan Lewis here from the Dallas Cowboys, and we have Damon Webb from the Tennessee Titans. Phone number 248-579-5260. Now, we got someone here special, and we know he's a part of both of you guys, and we're going to let him chime in and ask a couple of questions. We have Leron Taylor here, and – He's excited to be here and talk with you guys because y'all are all champs and y'all been to war and done up downs and rolled and done all this stuff to get it done. And, uh, you know, and what does it take to be number one? So, Leron, come on in, man, and give him some love and tell what's him what's up, happening. What's up, uh, what's up Webb and JD, man? What's the deal, bro? Hey, man, I, I wanted to uh, ask y'all, like, what, what was, uh, like, some of the questions that the uh, that the coaches was asking y'all when they was thinking about, you know, drafting one of you guys? Like, what were some of the questions and what was that process like talking to the coaches and did you meet any of the players and was they asking y'all questions during the process as well? Or was it, like, how was that? Um, well, go ahead, for me, it wasn't, Jordan, it wasn't that bad, man. It wasn't, it wasn't that crazy, man. It was just, you know, you know I had had that prior incident, and they was just they just asked me about the whole the court case and stuff like that. So that was that was the majority of, of the um of the meetings because they had heard <clears throat> everybody had spoke so highly of me, and it was right. just like, what is what is this about? And you know, so we just mainly that was just them asking their questions and and trying to figure out if if he you know telling the truth is he a good dude or is this going to occur again? So. I mean, that was really the, the, the whole gist of every every question I really had during the process. Okay. What about you, Webb? Yeah. I would say the same for me. I had my uh, incident in Ohio State, so they definitely, every interview I had, they asked me about that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but other than that, they just like getting to know me. As far as like on football, they just ask me systematic questions. We might like just break down film that they had, or they might put me on the board, or okay. something like that. Okay. Now my next question was like. Uh, First of all, let me say, I just want to chime in and say thank God that you guys were both cleared of those bogus charges because yeah, yeah, all yeah, it did sure. was, all it did was, and people don't understand, it not only does something to you, it, it's a st- tremendous strain on your families. Mm-hmm. So, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and, I, and, I, and I know that, and people don't understand that, and it's most of the time it's done for economic reasons, mm-hmm. man. So, like I said, thanks, thank God that you guys were both able to prove your innocence. Yeah, because sometimes, yeah. like piggybacking off of what my dad said, sometimes it don't always work like that. Because uh, an incident with uh, Sean Oakman from Baylor, um, he yeah. he lost out on everything. I know he was supposed to get drafted within the first three rounds, and he fought that case for like three three to four years. And, and he had to pay all his lawyers, and now he don't have no money. He's, like, dead broken. He was supposed to be yeah, a top yeah. prospect. You know what I'm saying? So that's crazy how that ended up. And it, and it ended up, like I said, and it ended up taking a lot of money out of both of you guys' pockets, right? Because you – Yeah. You, 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 yeah, you dropped, you dropped a lot of rounds, man, because of – you know yeah, what I'm saying? Definitely. So, and then I also had a question for y'all, man. Uh <laughs> What what would y'all what, what would y'all say the the best way like the best advice to give to to young to young inner city kids going into college and you know what type of pressure that they have to deal with I was I was talking mm-hmm. to my pops the other day and we was going over this and I told him I'm like a lot of kids probably not gonna want to hear this but I I said abstinence man. Like that's the best. Like you feel me? Like what? at at that point, like you know what I'm saying. It's like every time. <laughs> they're not gonna hear that. Bro. Yeah, they ain't gonna want to hear that. They not. not. Hear that, I mean, but like it's like every time it never fails, man. It it's, happens more yeah. times often than not. You know what I'm saying? To the kid, to the kids that's in the inner city. You know what I'm saying? You gotta. Go, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm, about hey, to, you gotta, I'm about to keep. I'm about to keep it real, man. I'm about to keep it whole, like a, a hundred. It's, it's really you. You understand. You see the signs in people. Like you see the signs in people. It could be shaky, and you just gotta understand. You gotta keep the main thing, the main thing. And if those people, like you, dealing with, not on the same course, like the exact same course mm-hmm. as you, and they're not trying to push yeah. you and make sure that you're going the same way, you gotta avoid it. Yeah. But at the same time, like. We, you know, we are emotional beings, man. We football players, bro. So we, mm-hmm. our egos and everything we do. Mm-hmm. So like, it's just you. You got to understand. You can't be around yes men. You can't be around people that that you know is bad for you, mm-hmm. but you you just enjoy the thrill or anything like that. But like, and it and it's honestly, it's our fault because we don't we don't we don't vet the people around us as much as we should, man. Because like, we potentially messing up millions of dollars because we keep in the wrong company mm, and we can absolutely. say like it's the girl fault it's this and that but like it's up to us to you know to stay out of situations like that That's and true. i can say from my my like from my perspective like i i'm like if i can do it again i wouldn't even when i saw the red flags no girl i would have just left it alone and that's just that I mean, we don't do it so Jordan, well tell us this, well Jordan. Said, Joe. Well tell, said. Yeah, well, well, very well spoken. Jordan, tell us this: Have you ever had a chance to speak with uh, Ezekiel Elliott? Because he went through the similar same thing where the young lady was trying to assassinate his character, and then they found out all of it was lies. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, it still didn't. It affected him, bro. It, it, it got. It, but he's going to make that back. And he understand that. So he, like, right. he right, understand yeah. that. And he, it's like, it's just, Quick. that's a one in a million case of kids. Like, right. he right. going to, whatever people say about him, he going to make that back. Oh, yeah. Regardless. Oh, yeah. So he like, going he he, to get he it got, back from Dallas or somebody else. <laughs> he got more opportunity. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. So, yeah. So did they answer your question? Uh, Leron, as far as you know, what would you say? You know, to the because it just seems to keep happening over and over to the kids from the inner city, and all we try. I mean, because to, go ahead. We just, just want to be around yes people. We want to yeah. be around love. Yeah. We want to be around the baddest girl. We want to be around the the toughest dudes. Like you know what I'm saying? And that's just and that's something that we gotta like we gotta eradicate out our community at all. Like like mm. period. Like we just gotta. Yeah. It's okay to be you know to yourself. It's okay to understand. Like I'm a football player. 
you ain't got to be in the streets. You ain't got to have the baddest chick all the time. Like, you just got to have genuine people around you, and that's not what we look for and when we want something. Nice. Well, nice. you have a and then to and to, to you guys and, and to a lot of the kids in the inner city uh, defense, you have a lot of people, outsiders, pulling at you because the city is a very unique place. You're talking about that people don't know about the underground. It's, I'm talking about from Little League all the way up. You got people betting on, on Little League and middle school and high school football and basketball. So you try those people try to infiltrate you and want to be your friend so they can say, I know Jordan mm-hmm. Lewis so I know yeah. Damon Webb. You know how many guys was hanging mm-hmm. around Cass and how many coaches yeah. you guys had, you know. And then yeah. when you're playing a big game, when you got a coach – who's strict and running things the correct way, and you got a big game, you got to uh, weed out all of the ERW players. Y'all know what those are, right? Eat, ride, and warm up players. <laughs> you know, those are the guys who, <laughs> those are the guys who just along for the ride. So when you got a big game, you got you, you got to get rid of all of those guys, and then you got some coaches around blowing the whistle that don't know what first and ten is, you know. So we yeah. understand I speak for the defense of some of the – it's a whole lot of uh, temptation in the city, and we're very proud of both of you guys. Absolutely. And, you know, it's a big rivalry. And myself, I'm a Henry Ford Trojan, so, you know, and I wear the, I wear the same, uh, you know, nickname y'all got in front of y'all is All-American. So <laughs> I understand what y'all – I understand what y'all been through. You know what I mean? So we I, look for, I look forward to someday – one of you guys getting both, and both of you guys being nominated maybe to the high school hall of fame. Absolutely. We got to we got to pick that up and we got to fight for players who deserve that here in the city. I know I myself is not in there yet, but uh you know, maybe someday soon. I don't worry about it, but it is an honor for you and your family and I hope that no one holds anything from high school or college or anything else against you. That that shouldn't be held against you because what you've done in high school is, you know, monumental. So I hope it works out for you guys, and we're very proud of you guys. And I'm going to turn it over here to uh, to Mr. Taylor, my co-host, and he's going to ask some more All right. questions. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to open the lines up for uh, Jordan and uh, Damon. Uh, if you want to call and ask them these guys a question, line is 248. 248- Five seven nine five two six zero. That's two four eight five seven nine five two six zero. So guys, when it, when does everything kick back off again for you? Everything getting ready to get going pretty soon, right? Y'all having mini camps and all of that type of stuff. And were you satisfied oh, yeah. with? And were you guys satisfied with your with with the, with the guys that you guys picked up in the draft? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we got the good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I mean, I, I think I everybody like did really good. Sure. I'm gonna tell yeah, you I something. Like we are sure some of the positions, though. Right. So I, I feel like we did a good job. I mean, we got an absolute steal, in Mikey, though. So. Oh, that yeah. was I yeah. do too. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I got a question for y'all, man. Y'all both from the city, man. What y'all think about the Lions draft? Oh. my First of all, man, come on, man. You know what I feel like. Well, look, <laughs> can, I, can I please break? Can I please bring it back to 2017, please? Yes, go please. Ahead. Go Let ahead. me. I got something to say. Like it was three. It was three kids that made Big Ten, all Big Ten honors. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Back. Yes, <laughs> me, Desmond King, yep. and Delano Hill. Delano Hill. Two <laughs> were two were two time All Americans. Right. And you. And you don't pick up in neither one of those. No, like all three of us, we don't get picked up by the line. Right. But then you pick up T. Taylor. Yes. <laughs> right. Who can't even get on the field? You had, you had three guys, all right Americans. There. Right there. He had the worst. And then the now worst. fast forward to 2019, you pick a guy that made on honorable mention in the whack. Right. <laughs> in the right, whack, huh, bro? Boy, hey, in the whack. Hey, boy, boy, you preaching like T.D. Jakes, ain't you, boy? <laughs> you preaching like T.D. Jakes. Keep I mean, on that's, with it. That's crazy, though. I mean, with, with the success that you both had, man, in college, I mean, from high school, from we could just say from Little League all the way up, you've been winners everywhere you've gone, man. And to be right in these guys' backyard and for them to just pass on you, that's to me, that's just – you. That's you. 
you can't you can't write that up, man. And and that's, I, that's and, crazy and I, to me. Like, and I'm gonna chime in there, I, guys. But go ahead, Jordan. Go and, ahead. And, and, yeah, but I feel like that they they you, you can tell how they feel about the city kids, and oh, that that oh, just tells yeah, you right there. Oh, absolutely, how they feel about, absolutely. You know, the black absolutely. kids in, in, in Detroit. So and they feel why, like we yeah. we take a chance on these guys. It might be you know the risk might be too high. And that's so why that's, I want to right. And that's why I want to chime in. From the and I'm a and this is why we are the fours hardcore sports talk show guys. The word on the street is the Lions got a thing from way back with Bo. They got into it with Bill Day. I mean with uh, not Bill Davis and he was the Pistons, but one of the Ford. The, one of the Fords and that. Uh, they really don't like Michigan players and they won't draft Michigan players because Michigan told them, how are y'all the only team in the NFL? You can go on any other team roster and they have a hometown kid on their roster. And how is it year in and year out that uh, the Lions will not even put a guy on special teams, not even on the practice squad. Hold on, we and we we constantly yeah. get killed by the tight end. Damon Webb is a covered uh, co- uh, cover safety. safety. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, come on, man. We get ate up. <laughs> come on. So and they, and and, that, and that's and that's a big thing. But they but uh, Damon, they will drive to Ohio State Buckeye. They will drive Ohio Ooh. State. Uh, the Lions will. They'll draft Ohio State Buckeye now. Yeah. If he's not from here, they, they haven't drafted right. one recently. Oh. Right. Well, they haven't drafted one recently, but, you know, mm. they say Chris Spielman was better than Dick Buskis. So <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. You know yeah. what I mean? And he wasn't even the best linebacker to come out of Ohio State. Mm. Pepper Johnson was yeah. right here from the city of Detroit, mm. McKenzie High School. Yeah. Pep was the truth. Yeah, that's fact. And, they, and that's a fact, Jack. Man, you understand? Look, that's y'all are rattling man. the conspiracies, man. They yeah. ain't going to like this. You expose it. Like that. That's all right. That's, that's what, all right. That's why we call hardcore. We don't. <laughs> we ain't pulling no punches. <laughs> ain't no question. We ain't pulling no punches, baby. Yeah, bro, this ain't, we, this ain't right. the Dan Patrick show. Right. <laughs> this is a hardcore, hardcore, hardcore sports talk show. We, and we, I like Dan Patrick. We, we bring, you know what I mean? We bringing it out, man. Right. They know what they doing. Right. And we just exposing them. Hey, it's bro. time for them to let that I mean, corner. That, that just blew my mind because I it just it, I just it was in the back of my head, but I wasn't gonna say nothing. But then they just picked the dude all whack. Right. Yeah. Not even. <laughs> well, well. How about so this? Well, one? you keep saying <laughs> all whack, bro. All whack. But how about this one, guys? All you uh, know, uh, bro. All yeah. Whack. <laughs> how about know, this though? Bro. How about this though? They had the Giants all talking about. Oh, we we're getting your. They was getting your quarterback. Oh uh, David. man. And then they no. pulled the move and drafted the guy from Duke. And he looked like he's from the school of the blind. Right. And he looked like he's from the school of the blind. But look, though, that, hold on, man. hold on. Why they why they get rid of Odell? Right. Yeah. Man, because that's systemic racism, bro. Mm. If you don't go along to get along, we'll holler at you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, if you don't well, do what they, we, they you don't do they what we the want New York to Giants, do. They never had a black starting quarterback. First time and that's you know Smith, and he only started for like two games or something like that. And right. that's and, and you know what? That's the only reason why they didn't get that kid, man. That's the only reason why. Yeah. And you know what? And I really, I really feel sorry for him that they tried to make it seem like he wasn't smart enough. Somebody slipped something out like that. But, but how no, do you how do you have fifty touchdowns? Uh, what's his name? Todd McShay, like he he tested off the charts with That's his, what he, you know, yeah. his IQ, all of that. Oh yeah, like, at the combine he tested off the charts and on his private. But workout. I, I think I think the Giants gonna pay for that though. He in the same oh, division, they in the NFC East, so he gonna see him twice a year. And he at the crib. I'm That's sick. where he's from. Right. So yeah, it sick. all worked out for him, him other than him missing out on a few million. You you sick what now? Washington did that, that they picked him. I don't know, man. He might be pretty good, man. He gonna oh, be yeah. Good. yeah. yeah. Ain't that good. where he's from? Ain't yeah. that where he's from? Yeah, he's from Maryland. Isn't he? That's where he's from, too. Oh, yeah, he's going to be a, he's gonna be a great, he's oh, going to be dog. even a better yeah, NFL quarterback. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think they they starting to get stuck to the stigma of the small quarterback quarterbacks because we had a, a, some successful ones like Russell Wilson and you know what I'm saying and Kyler Murray Kyler Murray might be something but that that don't mean that, that the big quarterbacks is not nothing no more you well, know what I'm saying and, and then I want to chime in there that is that is very very good guys what do y'all think about I think this was very monumental 
you're talking about you can't buy class and you can't fix stupid, of course. But you talk about the class of a Tom Brady on what he does for his guys and his offensive line. How about with Russell Wilson that he bought? A, he gave his guys a gift and he bought every one yeah. of them, the first, second, and third team, all of them twelve thousand dollars worth stock. of uh, stock from Amazon. Oh How yeah, that's that's well, different. Oh yeah, that was people, big. People Future heated. That he don't deserve that money, like. I don't, I don't see somebody that 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 deserve it more. Honestly, uh, yeah, you, you, you think about lying. what he did with that franchise, man. Right. Like, come on, man. Like, when the when the last time he might be the best quarterback in that franchise? Right. Yes, like, absolutely. Right. Nah, think bro. about it. Look, he transformed it. He he took the team. He took. You seen what he took to the playoffs two times, two years in a row. Right. And, they, and they would have two another Super Bowl if they would have gave the ball to Beast Mode. Yeah. Oh, man. They would have beat the yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Just because. Uh, you're right. Just because. But, look, though, but yeah. I don't know. Like, you're right. That might have been one of Russ's biggest mistakes. He should have gave that ball. He knew. Like, it wasn't, hey, it, it wasn't you know what? It wasn't his call. It was Pete Carroll's call. But see, here's he could have handed that ball off, man. He Russell Wilson. He could have handed the ball off. He could have audible. Yeah, he definitely could have audible. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, even if Beast Mode would have scored, they didn't have to give him the MVP. Look how many times they've given it to the quarterback when he wasn't the MVP. Absolutely. So, you know, you know, they didn't have to. They they didn't. He could have just he could have audible out of that. Right. So then Peyton Manning win the MVP when they beat the uh absolutely. when they beat uh yeah the Broncos yeah, yeah. the Broncos and, beat uh yeah uh, yeah the uh, Panthers and he didn't even have a yeah, good Panthers. game no right. Va- no no Von Miller won no, that Von Miller, Von Miller won that Von Miller won yeah Von didn't win okay Von Miller okay. won that okay. so guys real somebody quick somebody won it wasn't supposed to win yeah so guys real quick uh Mr Taylor's gonna take over we got a couple of fun questions for you guys because we oh, wow. down here at about five minutes left and he's just gonna ask y'all a couple of these fun questions and uh again it's a pleasure for us to have you guys all right we're gonna go with we Jordan you can go first and then Damon you follow with the same question uh right now at this very moment what is your favorite food? My favorite food, uh, probably anything Mexican. I love Mexican food, and we down here in Texas, all this Tex-Mex food. I, I, that's that's one of my pleasures. Okay, what about you, Damon? Uh, I would say seafood right now. Uh, okay, like, I like going to like big broils and like get my hands dirty. So, oh, okay, like, crab, lobster, shrimp. Oh, with, the, with, with the corn and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Potato, yeah. Okay, now the second next question is what is your what food is your guilty pleasure? What what do what 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 are you eating that you say, you know what, I shouldn't be eating this, but you know what? I just gotta have it. <laughs> uh anything steak. I ain't supposed I'm I'm like a pescatarian for real. I only eat like uh, some seafood and maybe a little bit of chicken. So I and when I, once I get a little steak in me, man, is I'm eating everything steak. So I'm, I mean, right. all types of you know anything. Like so, I that's probably one of my guilty pleasures for real. Okay, what about you, Dane? Um, I'm on a diet right now, so I really can't eat a lot. So I feel like <laughs> yeah, but okay, you're on a diet, but any you... fried food really? Uh, oh, any fried? Oh, fried okay. Chicken. Okay. Like, especially like fried chicken or hamburgers. I feel like once I eat those, I just all down here. I'm eating whatever for the day. So, okay. Now, uh, the uh, this one, one more. Uh, your uh, Jordan favorite uh, sports movie. Friday Night Lights. Oh man, there we go. <laughs> That's my movie right there. Hey, put Booby in. Let man. <laughs> Bi- hey, Billy's Lee looking like Larry Zaka out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I get about- teary eyed at the end of that one, man. What, a, what, what about you, Dave? Oh. What about you, Dave? All right. <laughs> I say. I probably say, "Remember the Titans." That's uh, big right there, baby. Yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah, my yeah. man Remember telling. Remember Titans Club. That's a close second, yeah. though. For Ain't real. no question. He tell him yeah. you're a Hall of Famer in my book. You understand? I had one more. I that's, can't that's remember right. what the last one was. Well, guys, <laughs> we want to let y'all know we really appreciate you guys taking the yes, time man. coming on. Good luck with the season. We gonna be watching. Yes, yeah, stay healthy, guys. Yep. Stay healthy, yep. and we really appreciate you coming on the show, man. Yep. It's been fun. You guys are absolutely have been 100% real. 
Yeah. And that's what we like here on the fours, man. We yeah. ain't pulling no punches, man. So we'll be looking in the mail. Mr. Taylor, you know, my co-host, we'll be looking in the mail for our uh, Dallas Cowboy and our <laughs> Tennessee Titans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, coming in, I'm coming in bringing in gear personally. Man, I know how it is. Everybody, yeah. everybody asking. But let me be real with you. Hey. It's a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans here in Michigan. And I one more you. and one oh, more time yeah. before for we sure. one more time before we let you guys go. I know uh, you were saying that Damon helps you uh, in your camp as well. Can you give the date on that before we we let you guys go? May 22nd. It's free to everybody, man. We're going to have food there. So I'm trying to make it a, a community event where everybody can come in, you know, and just have fun. And what's the location? Uh, the old Tiger Stadium. So it's the new um, – Okay, okay. It's the new PAL facility. The new PAL so facility. The new PAL facility. That's yep. my man. That's where we're going to have it. Robert Jameson wow, okay. and David Greenwood at PAL. We're going to have them on in the near mm-hmm. weeks. And, guys, this has been a pleasure. Right. This is the Forest Hardcore Sports Talk Show. And we're going to be signing off. Good luck in the season, guys. Good and luck. We appreciate Good it. Good luck, bro. And Thank we'll, you, guys. And we'll talk yeah, to you soon. Thank y'all for having me. All right. Oh, yeah. It's been yeah, fun. I, 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 Good evening, it. everyone. I, I, I we'll be back, back next on. week. Oh, All yeah. Right. we def- During the season, we're definitely going to have you guys back on if you can find time to make it. So yeah. we definitely want to keep that. No, we keep can make that, that. We can make that happen. Hey, bro, okay. Detroit Power. All right, guys. Take care. All right. We're signing Ooh. off. Great show. Great show. <laughs> yeah, no, no. No, no. We are-